Okay, guys, we're picking up right where we left off. We're on document E, the Ordinances of Government, basically the rule book for the Caliph or the Islamic ruler. Now, one of the main things that I want to draw your attention to is part six here. So, if the choice is between somebody fighting you in a war, it's only going to end when you are either dead or Muslim, and they give you that third option, which is to join the pact, you pay a special tax, you get to keep your religion, and you get to keep your life. Well, if you don't want to be Muslim, would you rather die or would you rather pay an extra tax? The answer should be pretty obvious. So, a lot of people uh, would rather do that than fight. I think that uh, it's fair to say that that makes things a little easier for is for the Muslim armies while they're steamrolling through these areas. They don't have to fight or convince everybody uh, that they meet. Plus, you've got this nice outline of government. Everything is set up quite orderly. You have one person, uh, the caliph, who's responsible for being the judge, the uh, being in charge of the army, being in charge of the police. Pretty stable system of government, assuming that everything works right. So back to our essay factory for document number five. One of the key uh, details that I would say here that um, I would say that Islam allows you to keep your faith, uh, rather not you, uh, Islam allowed conquered people to keep their faith if they paid a special tax. The rest of the details you got on your own. Alright, so last document. Let's turn the back cover document F. All right, now we got a little bit of a history over here. The Origins of the Islamic State, written by Ahmad ibn Jabir al-Baladuri. Good stuff. Circa 850 AD. All right, so it's in the year 636. Uh, he's writing a history about 200 years after the battle. And an important detail here, he is an Arabic Muslim. He's writing a, a history about a battle that his guys won, and he's writing 200 years after the fact. Do you think that the guy was alive while this happened? Did he see it himself? Remember, we talked about this. This is what's called a secondary source. He wasn't there. Secondhand information. So, might not be as reliable as we'd like him to be. He might not be getting all the details right, might not be telling the truth. But let's see what he has to say anyway. Okay? So, Heraclius, Byzantine Emperor, he's got an army, he's going to do good stuff. Uh, he's actually trying to go down there and stomp out the Muslim army before they start taking over the rest of his territory. Now, it says here that only 24,000 Muslims are fighting almost 200,000 Byzantines. Might be an exaggeration, but the point is that the Muslims win. They win by a long shot. So, when they get to the city of Hims, which is in Syria, they're not Muslims, they had been under Byzantine rule, they go there, and they say, eh, take care of yourselves, Byzantines are coming back, we want to fight them one-on-one. -on -one. So the people of Hims say, well, we like you guys better, we don't want to be part of the Byzantines anymore, why don't you just rule over us instead? Now, I don't know how true that was, but... Certainly there was a lot of people out there who would rather be ruled over by the Muslims than by their previous rulers, be they Byzantine or Persian or North African, what have you. Wherever the, is, uh, the, wherever the Islamic armies went, people had that choice to make. So, one of the details that you can get out of this account is that some people wanted to be ruled by Islam. The rest you can fill in. Now, once you guys fill in these details, I want you guys to come back to this section right here, okay? So take some time, fill out those details, and come back. Alright guys, here you are. You should have all those details filled out by now. Okay, now we're going to answer this question. 
All right, uh, we're going to answer the original question, why did Islam spread so quickly, going based on the details that you guys have filled out in this chart. Okay, this should be your own work, so I don't have it filled out right here. Okay, so based on the evidence, how are we going to answer the question? The evidence is everything we have compiled in these boxes here. So, we need a one-sentence answer to the whole question. You need to look at what you've written down in your evidence, and you need to pick sort of a big summary, kind of push the information together into one sentence, and tell me in one sentence, why did Islam spread so quickly? So here's my example thesis statement, okay? Uh, I've kind of taken three or four good points out of the evidence boxes up here, and I've put them into one sentence uh, that sums it all up. So I say that Islam spread so quickly because of a powerful army, that's one document, a good position next to two weak empires, that's another document, and a system of rules that convinced people that it was a good idea to convert. That's the third document. One, two, three. And, you know, one, two, three sets up the home run for the whole essay. So, you have to write down here which three pieces of evidence that you choose to support your thesis statement in these boxes right here, okay? So just write down the piece of evidence. Don't need to copy and paste the whole thing. Just give me the document that you're using. All right, so... Okay, so your introduction is going to set the scene for the for the reader. It's going to tell the reader, um, it's going to prep them for the evidence you're going to give them. So you need to set, you need to set the scene, tell them what you're going to write about, what your thesis statement is, and what the evidence you're going to be bringing to the table is. So first things first, you need to, uh, so we've got to build the scene here. So the essay is answering the question, as we've seen, why did Islam spread so quickly? So if you take that and you copy it down here, you can kind of rework it into something different. You don't want to say it word for word. Uh, you don't want to, like, copy the, the sentence or the question in there. You want to kind of, uh, you want to spice up your language. You want to... Uh, say it in a intelligent and complete sounding way. So, uh, you can reword it by saying uh, Islam spread across a huge area in a relatively short period of time. You can say then um, that uh, you can kind of pose a question to the reader that sets up your own answer. You can say, um, why did this religion uh, become so powerful, becomes, sorry, becomes so powerful so quickly. There you've just set the stage two sentences into a paragraph. Usually paragraphs are between three and five sentences, so you're off to a good start. So then you can take your thesis statement and put it right into your introduction. Islam spread across a huge area in a relatively short period of time. Why did this religion become so powerful so quickly? Islam spread so quickly because of a powerful army, a good position next to two weak empires, and a system of rules that convinced people that it was a good idea to convert. There, a wonderful introduction. It tells you what you're, it tells the reader what you're going to tell them. Next step is to actually do the telling. So you usually have one, two, three paragraphs that serve as the body. Introductions, the head. You can't exist without your head, but you can't exist without your body either. Talking head, not really much to it. Now, if you got, the, you want to have the complete picture here. So every paragraph should be around three to five sentences, and it should uh, be made up of the details that you've gotten from uh, each piece of your evidence. Okay. So, for example, if I wanted to start it off talking about uh, the powerful. Uh, the, the importance of Mecca as a trade center, then I would um, start, uh, then I would just copy my the evidence that I made right into the body paragraph. Let's see, see how this reads. Uh, Mecca was an important trade center. Uh, many rich merchants passed through it, as well as pilgrims going to the Kaaba. Many people could have spread Islam along trade routes. Well, 
It's good, but we're missing a key detail. What the heck does Mecca have to do with Islam? Well, to answer that question, you have to go back to your evidence to kind of fill in the details that don't make that make uh, no sense, because they can't read your mind. You have to explain all the details so that all of your readers will be on the same page with you. So, you got Mecca, it's important, but why is it important for Islam? Well, you can either read in your notes, you could read this section here, uh, I mean this, para this document here to get that information. Um, you can check the timeline, or you could reread this passage here to find an important detail. Mecca becomes the central city in Islam, becomes like the capital city of the Islamic religion. That should be one of the main important details that you get out of this whole exercise. So you can start off the, sen the paragraph by saying Mecca uh, became the most important city in the Islamic world. And then you can continue into the, the details you had before by saying uh, before that, it was an important trade center. Many rich merchants passed through it, as well as pilgrims from going to the Kaaba. Many people could have spread Islam along trade routes. Boom! Body paragraph number one is done. Okay? Now you do the same thing for number two and number three, and then you end up at your conclusion. So you, you started off by telling them what you were going to tell them. You told them. Now you got to tell them that you told them. It's corny, but it works. So, you have to kind of recap, give them a recap, summarize what you just talked about. Okay? So, you say, just kind of restate how you started it off again in a different way. Say, Islam would eventually become one of the most widespread and influential religions in the world and then you start then you can answer the you can go back to the question that we have had all through this all through this exercise why did Islam spread so quickly say that It spread so far and so quickly because of, and then you list your your evidence one by one because of, for example, um, because the, of the importance of the city of Mecca as a trade center, and then you can keep going. You add. Uh, a little section about your second body paragraph and your third body paragraph and that's it then you've got a full-fledged essay so I want you guys to go ahead and use the details that you've collected by analyzing your essays write a body paragraph three to five sentences a piece write your conclusion if you need help on any of this raise your hand and ask me that's what I'm here for uh, don't want you guys to get stuck so make sure that you're asking the questions if you've got them all right, and once you're done with this, I want you to share it with me. You go to share, you type in my email, and then you uh, share it with me so that I can see that you've completed it. Okay, uh, in order to make sure that, uh, that you guys have watched this whole thing, when you get done sharing, uh, the uh, w when you're done sharing it with me, I want you to write, I'm all done at the top here next to Let's Write. That way I know that you've been paying attention this whole time. All right, guys. Uh, get to it, and good luck.